For Bob Dylan, Jerry Garcia had no equal. After learning of the sudden death yesterday of the leader of the Grateful Dead, Dylan reflected that Garcia was like having a big brother who taught more than he'll ever know. To quote Garcia's own lyrics, it was a long, strange trip. CBS News correspondent Randall Pinkston takes a look back. Jerry Garcia was the guitarist, composer, and founding member of the Grateful Dead. He was its heart and its soul. He poured himself into his music and reflected on that in a 1989 interview. A large part of my life I've spent doing something which has turned out to be more fun than I thought it was going to be, and it's lasted way longer than I imagined it might. Garcia and the Grateful Dead got their start in the 60s. They symbolized the counterculture of that era. Through the years, they released almost 40 albums and had a number of hits. It's a big loss for the, for the world, for anyone who loves music. We also have to remember that his life was a, far more a blessing for all of us. And I think we should, perhaps, if we're going to dwell on anything, dwell on that. To their fans, affectionately called deadheads, this band represented more than just songs. It represented a way of life. It was that sort of devotion that made Garcia and the Grateful Dead a top concert attraction three decades after they began playing music. No other band, I think, matched the extent of audience devotion that, that the Dead have gotten for for a long period of time now, since the 60s, really. In addition to playing music, Garcia was an artist. He also launched a very successful line of colorful neckties. Garcia had a history of health problems that caused frequent breaks in the band's grueling touring schedule. In 1986, he entered the hospital in a diabetic coma. He has also admitted past drug abuse. One of his fans said Jerry Garcia's death is like losing a member of the family a grandfather to a whole lot of people. Randall Pinkston, CBS News, New York. It was Bob Weir, the rhythm guitarist, who was performing, but it was Jerry Garcia's spirit they came to experience. It's the people that have gone to see the music that we all have in common that you've made friends over the years. I mean, we're talking 15 years, 20 like, years, 20, 23, 25 years. Good music can make sad times better. We've got our, we've got our work cut out for us this evening, so we'll just get started. Inside the Hampton Beach Casino, Bob Weir was performing without the Grateful Dead, but more importantly, he was performing without Jerry Garcia, his closest friend for 31 years. His life was a far more a blessing for all of us. And I think we should, perhaps, if we're going to dwell on anything, dwell on that. Thank you. It was Garcia who founded the Grateful Dead, but Bob Weir shared in the band's creative instincts. On this night outside the Hampton Beach Casino, candles were burning for Jerry Garcia, and his image adorned t-shirts on nearly every back. And there was serious discussion, should the band continue on without its creative leader? Some said yes, others said the dead will never be the same. It'll live on forever, but not live, unfortunately. We have it in memories, and we have it in tapes, and, and good times that we can recall. No way. Bob, Mickey, and they'll just carry it on. It's a new beginning. I'm Bill Shields for CBS News.
I see, uh, well, a large part of my life I've spent doing something which has turned out to be more fun than I thought it was going to be, and it's lasted way longer than I imagined it might. I've seen him like 30 times. I mean, people have seen him like hundreds of times, so I'm just like a baby still. So it's like, the, with music, I care whether people like it or not. I want them to like it, you know. Uh, and so I think I have more of an investment there, you know, in terms of ego. It, it has a lot to do with who I think I am. Just hold me.